Back in Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, Pokeballs worked in a really strange way. Unlike the later titles, which use some fairly intimidating looking formulae to figure out whether or not a Pokemon is caught or breaks free, the first generation of games had a different setup. A set of rules which must be completed in order every single time you throw a Pokeball. But because this algorithm works in such an odd way, there are some surprising side effects to consider. Like, for example, did you know that in Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, it is never worth lowering a Pokemon's HP below one third if you're trying to capture it? Just to be clear what I mean here, all those times you accidentally knocked out a Pokemon as you chipped away its last sliver of HP, you, you didn't need to. Below 33%, the odds of your Pokeball successfully capturing the Pokemon don't change. It... It's... Let's prove that. At this stage, I would like to give a massive thank you to Lean, better known online as Dragonfree, who runs an incredible site where she breaks down a lot of the inner workings of Pokemon games, and last week was kind enough to talk me through all of this stuff. Alright, I think it will be easiest if we run through the algorithm with an example setup in mind, so let's say we're trying to catch a Pidgeotto with an Ultra Ball, and they've got no status effects to consider. Uh, their maximum HP is 100, but we've got them down all the way to just 33 hit points, which is close enough to one third of their health, and I'm going to prove to you that's as far as you need to go when catching a Pokemon in these games. Now, the algorithm itself is a 10-step process. Actually, it's an 11-step process, but the final step involves figuring out how many times the Pokeball wobbles uh, before the Pokemon escapes capture, and quite frankly, this is going to get heavy enough as it is, so we'll, we'll skip that bit. Uh, yeah, 10 steps. By the end of that, we'll know if the Pokemon is being caught successfully, or instead, if it breaks free. Now, step one and two aren't going to be applicable in the vast majority of situations, but as I said, these steps are triggered in order, and so to begin with, the game asks a couple of important questions. Step one, is the player trying to catch the Ghost Marowak in Lavender Town? If they are, the Pokeball immediately fails. If they're not, they can then proceed to step two. At this point, the game checks to see if the player has just used a Master Ball. If so, they immediately catch the Pokemon without needing to consider any other factors. However, most of the time, including in our example, this isn't going to be the case. So, let's keep going. Things are about to get a little bit more complicated now, sorry. I, actually, not. I'm not sorry, you can blame Game Freak for all of this. Step 3, the game generates a random number based on the Pokeball being used. If you've just tricked a standard Pokeball, for example, that's a number between 0 and 255. If it's a Great Ball, that's 0 to 200. And if it's an Ultra Ball, which we're using, it'll be between 0 and 150. The idea at this stage being, smaller numbers are better. Alright, we'll call that number random 1 or R1 and hold on to it for just a moment, because in step 4 we're looking at status effects. We'll want another variable here, which we'll call S for status, and if the Pokemon you're trying to catch is either asleep or frozen, then S equals 25. If poisoned, burned or paralysed, it'll be 10. And if there are no status effects in play, which is the case with our Pidgeotto, then S equals 0. And this bit is interesting, because you then take random 1 and subtract S from it. And if that number, which we'll call R with a little asterisk next to it, if that number ends up being less than zero, the Pokemon is caught. Right then and there, before we've even looked at current HP or anything like that, you catch it. Why is that interesting? Well, I'll tell you for why. Legendary Pokemon, like Mewtwo for example, are thought to be very difficult to catch, right? Well, my good pals, they're not, really, because, you see, there's this bit in the algorithm in which HP and base catch rates haven't even been considered yet, we'll get onto both of those later on. We're literally looking at a random number based on the Pokeball you've used and whether or not the Pokemon has a status effect. That means if you want to catch Mewtwo or any of the legendary Pokemon in this generation of games, you're better off not even attacking the Pokemon to begin with. Let's say you've just put Mewtwo to sleep whilst it's at full HP and then you throw an Ultra Ball. Because of this part of the algorithm, you're given a 17.45% chance of catching it with each throw. But if you manage to get it all the way down to 1 HP, then put it to sleep, then once again throw an Ultra Ball and the rest of the algorithm is considered, that percentage will only rise to 19.21%. It's really not worth the effort. Professor Oak never told you that, did he? Ah. <laughs> okay, let's get back on track. We said our Pidgeotto didn't have any status effects, so there's no chance that we can catch it at this stage, but we will want to hold on to that R asterisk number all the same. It'll come back into play slightly later on. Step seven, now we look at the hit points. This will get a bit fiddly, so I'm just gonna blast through it and recommend that you visit Lean site if you're after a more detailed breakdown. The game takes the Pokemon's maximum HP and multiplies it by 255 to create a value we'll call F. Now we said our Pidgeotto, who I'm gonna just call Brian from this point onwards, we said Brian, had 100 HP, which means for us, F equals 25,500. Stick with me here, it's, it's not as bad as it sounds. We now take that number and divide it by 8 if we're using a Great Ball, because, well, I've absolutely no idea why that happens, and 12 if we're using any other kind of Pokeball. Sorry, I know we're in the middle of something, but I need to point this bit out as well. That actually means that in certain situations, a Great Ball can offer a slightly better catch percentage than an Ultra Ball. Why, why is that a thing? Let's just crack on. Because we're using an Ultra Ball, we divide our number by 12, giving us a new value which we'll call F2, 
of 2,125. Hold on to that one as well. Right, grab the Pokemon's current HP, which we've decided is 33, and divide that by 4 to create yet another variable, Brill. This one's called F3, and then divide F2 by F3 to make, you guessed it, a number we're going to be calling F4. That means we've ended up with an F4 value of 257.58, but you know what? I don't think we've made this quite complicated enough, so let's just add a special rule here that says if F4 is greater than 235, we'll just call it 235 instead. You'll see why that's important in a moment. Are you still with me? Right, I think that was the messiest bit, but think how impressed your mates are going to be if you can explain all of this to them in full. Step 8. So I mentioned this before with Mewtwo, but every Pokemon has a base catch rate to consider, and you can look all of those up online. Legendary Pokemon, for example, have a base catch rate of 3, whereas the really common ones like Caterpie or Pidgey or Ratatatata, they have a base catch rate of 255. Now, if that number is lower than the R asterisk value we determined earlier on, the Pokemon breaks free, and that right there is why Mewtwo seems so bloody difficult to catch. Anyway, Brian has a reasonably high base catch rate, which is good for us at 120, which means at this point in the algorithm, it's only a 20% chance that it'll escape our Pokeball. We're almost there, I promise. We're, we're very close. But first, time to generate another random number. That's always good. We'll call this one random two, or R2 if we're feeling a little adventurous, and that'll always be a value between zero and 255. All right, for the final step, thank God the final step, we take a look at that number and if it's less than or equal to that of F4, the Pokemon is successfully caught. Now, in this example, because our F4 equals 235, this means if we get all the way to step 10, we're guaranteed to catch Brian. And the only point at which we could have failed was back in step eight, where we said there's a 20% chance that the Pokemon would break free, which means if you throw an Ultra Ball at a Pidgeotto with 33 out of 100 HP, and there are no status effects to consider, you have an 80% chance of catching it. So now we figured that out, let's very quickly prove that lowering its HP any further doesn't have an impact. Let's say it's the same setup exactly, but we reduce Brian's hit points to 5. What actually changes in our algorithm? Well, very little. In fact, we just need to adjust the F3 value, which was its current HP, which means we end up with a different number for F4, 1700 to be exact. But, and here's the kicker, because of that weird rule that we mentioned, once again, if F4 is greater than 235, we just call it 255, which in turn means absolutely nothing changes. I said this right at the beginning, but I feel it needs to be reiterated. Think about what we've just learned, and now think about all the Pokemon we've accidentally knocked out because we wanted to get their HP just a little bit lower before throwing the Pokeball. You didn't need to do that. We didn't need to do that. I don't, I don't know why I'm so invested in this. <laughs> all right, so what's the bigger point of this video? We better try and find one, haven't we? This stuff isn't necessarily important. In fact, it's not important. You can and likely did play through this those Pokemon games without knowing exactly what was going on behind the scenes, but I think there's something interesting in that from time to time, everyone will have knocked out a Pokemon they wanted to catch simply because they felt they knew what was making the game tick. Should the developers have conveyed that information more clearly to the player, perhaps they could have had a pop-up that said, hey, just FYI, I wouldn't bother attacking that Pokemon anymore. It's not gonna help. Or is it actually kind of cool that they allowed players to be defeated by their own certainty? I don't really know. I just needed to tell someone about this, so. Thanks for listening. Okay, so we kind of went down the rabbit hole a little bit this week, but yeah, thank you for watching this episode of Here's a Thing. If you did enjoy it, please do give us a like on YouTube, and yeah, we do them every Thursday, so maybe check in next week to see what we're up to, or go and watch one of the others that we've done before now. Uh, neither of these videos have algorithms in them, if that if that's a plus. Uh, we've got Grand Theft Auto Sex and how it changed age ratings forever, and then down here, uh, Dead Space 3 and the game that the developers truly wanted to make. So yeah, go have a watch if you haven't, and if you have, Nice one. See you in a bit. Bye.